Now, no great action game exists without a killer weapon or 12, because if we don't feel tremendously empowered and satisfied while demolishing enemies, honestly, what is the point of even playing? Now, a weapon that's hugely fun to use can elevate a game from being good to absolutely amazing, but sometimes developers will end up cloistering some of their finest work away in paid DLC that is released a few months or even years later. So let's take a look at some of the best that we didn't mind shelling out for us. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 best video game weapons here in DLC. Number 10. Atom's Judgment – Fallout 4now, Fallout 4 released a number of additional weapons in its numerous DLC expansions, though perhaps the best of the lot is Atom's Judgment. Atom's Judgment is an ultra-powerful variation on the Super Sledge melee weapon, which beyond dealing 40 base damage also doles out at least 100 radiation damage per hit, and far more if you max out all your damage perks. As such, Fallout players were eager to get their grubby mitts on it and start cracking skulls, yet because Atom's Judgment was exclusive to 2016's Far Harbor DLC expansion, you first had to throw down around $24 to access it. And beyond that, you also had to complete the Children of Atoms faction questline, which at the end would finally gift you with this glorious heft of hammer. Now, this questline isn't particularly challenging by any means, but it is a little frustrating that arguably the most satisfying to use melee weapon in the entire game was released more than six months after the base game of Fallout 4, at which point many players had already moved on. Number 9. Ragnarok Final Fantasy XV if you shelled out for Final Fantasy XV's Digital Premium Edition or later drop $24.99 to pick up all of the DLC packs in the game's Season Pass, you gained access to arguably its very best bladed weapon, Ragnarok. Ragnarok's big hook is that it's an incredible starter weapon if you paid out to unlock it. While it doesn't tout the most immediately amazing stats, it does allow you to administer hellacious amounts of damage by adding massive boosts to Noctis's warp strikes. Effectively, using Ragnarok made the majority of the game an absolute cakewalk, even trivial in parts, because it allowed you to largely just spam warp strike against enemies until they fell over. In fact, Ragnarok stacks the deck so heavily in the player's favor that some who purchased the DLC even opted not to use it during their first playthrough for fear that it would feel like basically cheating and ultimately dilute the impact of the initial experience. Number 8. Eden Spark – Just Cause 3 When you absolutely positively need to obliterate everybody in the vicinity, accept no substitute for Just Cause 3's Eden Spark, which is exclusive to the game's Bavarium Sea Heist DLC which launched at a price of $5.99. The Eden Spark is an hilariously potent weapon that, when fully upgraded, borders on overpowered, albeit hilariously so. The game harnesses lightning from the sky to strike the desired target, with the impact of a direct hit being catastrophic enough that basically nothing in the game can withstand it. From fleshy NPCs to fortified structures, all will fall. As a result, the Eden Spark turns the player into a near-unstoppable juggernaut. Every mission the game throws at you is now just a cinch, and the weapon's large target area makes it especially useful when liberating bases, towns, and outposts. Unlike Final Fantasy XV though, one suspects few Just Cause players banned themselves from using this weapon, given that the series is pretty preoccupied with causing as much carnage as possible. Number 7. The Obsidian Greatsword – Dark Souls now, without wandering too deep into the very fiery debate about which Dark Souls weapons are truly the best, it's fair to say that many of the fan favourite weapons are hidden away in DLC packs, including the first game's Obsidian Greatsword. Exclusive to the Artorias of the Abyss DLC, at a launch cost of $14.99, the Obsidian Greatsword's mileage may vary amongst players depending on their build, but between its high base damage, low stat requirements, and potential to deliver massive amounts of damage when buffed, it is one of the game's best drag weapons. Yet, it's also a real pain in the ass to obtain, requiring players to not only flash their credit card and buy the DLC, but additionally defeat the hardest boss in the game as a whole, Calamite, and then sever his tail which, due to being out of reach for most of the fight, is an insanely challenging feat itself. Nobody could really blame even a seasoned Dark Souls player for deciding that the Obsidian Greatsword wasn't worth all that hassle, but if they did that, they also missed out on an absolute corker of a weapon. Number 6. Tactical Weapons Bundle – The Last of Us The Last of Us launched with an entertaining online multiplayer component, known as Factions, which encouraged players to drop a few bucks on a DLC pack if they wanted to get a major leg up on the competition. For an admittedly measly $2.99, players could purchase the Tactical Weapons Bundle, which included four new powerful and precise weapons – the Tactical Shotgun, Burst Pistol, Frontier Rifle, and Crossbow. The tactical shotgun and crossbow in particular gave those who owned them a considerable advantage over the have-nots. 
with the shotgun's ridiculous range allowing even lesser skilled players to easily rack up kills against unsuspecting rivals, while the crossbow made impacted enemies bleed until healed. Some considered the advantage of owning this bundle egregious enough that it basically amounted to pay to win, in turn prompting some players to vocally retire from the game outright. Now, $2.99 isn't a lot of money to most people, of course, but the notion that dropping a nominal amount of money can give you such a blatant advantage over other people in a competitive video game, well, that is just the worst. On their own merits, though, the weapons are fantastic, and it's a shame that they weren't ever implemented into the base game for free. Hopefully, this might actually change in the upcoming remake, where they may be included in the single-player mode. Number 5. Foxblade – Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Players who pre-ordered Metal Gear Rising Revengeance were granted access to the Grey Fox DLC, which not only unlocked a cyborg ninja costume for Raiden, but also the character's iconic fox blade. But those who didn't pre-order could still buy it for a small fee, yet even once you got the DLC, you still needed 200,000 battle points to purchase the fox blade, yet considering how comically powerful it is, it is definitely worth it. Dubbed a cheat weapon by many, the fox blade is similar to the HF blade except that it laughs in the face of armor as each strike has a high chance of just no-selling armor and slicing through it like a warm pat of butter, and you can raise this chance further with some costly upgrades. Pretty much all non-boss enemies piss themselves in the presence of this weapon, which while perhaps not the best blade for pulling off stylish and prolonged combos, is howlingly efficient at cutting down foes to size in record time. Number 4. The Sword of Transitus – Rage 2 Roughly six months after Rage 2 hit the market, to wildly mixed reviews no less, Bethesda released their second DLC, Terra Mania, for $5. The expansion introduced players to a new locale, known as the Deadlands, while most intriguingly allowing them to unlock a new weapon, the Sword of Transitus. Described as an ancient relic of unspeakable power, this sword can both unlock pathways between worlds and, more importantly, tear through foes of just about any size without much fuss. This is especially true once the sword is fully upgraded with an array of traversal and attack abilities, allowing you to dash around and render pretty much any combat encounter trivial. You're also able to use the sword in the rest of the game world from this point, including New Game Plus. Yet considering the relatively polarizing response to Rage 2 upon release, many no doubt wish the sword had been available since day one to help spice up the base game a little. Number 3. The M12 Locust – Mass Effect 2 Mass Effect 2's DLC pack Stolen Memory originally released for $6.99, and not only introduced players to final squad member Kazumi Goto, but also gave them access to one of the best weapons in the game, if not the entire series, the M12 Locust. You're able to use the Locust from midway through the loyalty mission, and it packs a mighty punch indeed. Now This SMG is quite the triple threat, with its strong damage per second rate, low degree of recoil, and high amount of accuracy, ensuring that you can rip through hordes of enemies with far greater ease and precision than most of the game's assault rifles. This collectively mitigates its relatively low rate of fire, ensuring the Locust is one of Mass Effect 2's best picks for mid to long range engagement. It makes gunplay an absolute breeze, but most importantly, it is insanely fun to wield as well. Number 2. The Whirligig Saw – Bloodborne we couldn't just limit this list to a single From Software game, especially with Bloodborne offering up one of the developer's all-time best-loved weapons, the Whirligig Saw. The Whirligig Saw is introduced in the game's Old Hunters DLC, and will let you turn just about any base game enemy into shreds of quivering meat. Its status as a trick weapon allows it to transform from a long-handed mace into a saw on a stick, the latter proving particularly satisfying due to the ridiculous amount of stylish damage that it can dish out. As strength weapons go, Bloodborne has no immediately superior options, and there's a firm argument to be made that it's simply the best and most effective weapon in the entire damn game. As with other weapons on this list, some purists ultimately opted against using it because they felt that it made the game too easy, and prevented players from actually engaging their brain to defeat bosses. That said, rending a giant monster into pulled pork with a comically oversized pizza cutter is a gleeful pleasure that speaks very much for itself. And number 1. The Fully Upgraded Master Sword – The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's inclusion on this list comes with a slight asterisk, considering that you can of course unlock the Master Sword in the base game, though if you want to upgrade it to its full potential, you'll need to play the Trial of the Sword DLC Challenge mode. Beyond shelling out $20 for the DLC pack, the much tougher task lies in completing the extremely difficult Trial of the Sword stages, which are round-based battles against waves of enemies. To make matters worse, you start off with no equipment and must scavenge everything you can from various 
various rounds, while checkpoints are only scarcely deployed throughout. If you reach and survive the final round, the Master Sword will receive a permanent power boost to 60, and its durability will raise to 190, and it will even glow blue. It is a pain in the ass getting to the end, but you'll in turn be able to clown just about anything this game throws at you, and it is very satisfying to do so. And there we go my friends, those were the 10 best video game weapons that were hidden in DLC. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always I've been Jules, you can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ but the O is a zero. We can swing by Instagram where it's the same handle, RetroJ but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope that you're treating yourself well with love and respect my friend because you deserve all the best things in life alright? You do not need to pay for some DLC to unlock that positivity, you just need to be kind to yourself. Because you are a massive ledge and you deserve the best, all right? Now go out there and absolutely smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.